Give God a hand tonight all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Give somebody a hug next to you one more time and take your seat tonight. God is in this place. Let's stay in this attitude of worship. If Jeremiah, Jeremiah, if you could just hang with me, everybody else can go. And uh, you don't have to play. I'll tell you when. Just, just keep your seat there. If this is your first time at the church tonight, <laughs> what a night to come. Has this been amazing so much tonight already? Jesus has been filling this place. We just want to welcome you. We want to tell you that we, we notice you. We thank you for being here. And I, I know maybe, you know, some things have already been done tonight that maybe you haven't seen. People are jumping on stage and <laughs> the drums are going pow, 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 you know. There's a lot of things that are happening, but I just want to explain to you all that it is, is we're just passionate about Jesus. We're not, we're not trying in any way to have a religious attitude. We're not trying to, this isn't for a show. We actually have been changed by God. We've really been changed by Jesus. The one that we're singing to is real to us. And we're praying that tonight he becomes real to you too. So um, I'm just going to talk for about 10 minutes. And uh, we will be out on time tonight. But I just wanted to share something very, very clear. On Wednesday nights, this, uh, for this, um, speaking for this uh, service, what we're going to be doing on Wednesday nights this month is we're going to be talking from our growth books and from our DG lessons. How many of y'all follow the DG lesson and you have a DG? Okay, great. Well, praise the Lord. Then we, we don't have to talk afterwards. Praise God. Okay. Make sure you're on that DG lesson. So we're going to talk about the DG lesson from tonight. I'm going to give you one insight. And then we're going to move on tonight. But um, I pray that this really touches you. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. This is this week's DG lesson. You'll be going through this in your DGs if you haven't already done it this week. Let's read. Don't you realize, this is Paul talking, that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourself. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, stop fooling yourself. Look at your other neighbor. Stop fooling yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or are greedy or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people. He's going through the list here, y'all. But can I just pause here? Have any of you ever been these people? Okay, let's just keep it real. Nobody should be looking at the scripture and being like, oh, all those people. You're already missing it if you're doing that. None of these, none of these, come on, God, listen. None of, I, I want you to know what I'm about to say. This isn't Gavin talking. <laughs> I, I didn't get with Pastor Marco before this service and say, oh, I, I got this amazing line. The Bible is saying none of these are going to inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, some of you were once like that. <laughs> but, somebody say but. but. Oh, come on, you got to yell it, but. but. All right. But you were cleansed. Oh, nobody's giving God praise right there. I said this, but don't act, don't act greater than you are. If it weren't for God, okay. You were made holy. Give God a clap there. You were made right with God. Give God a clap there. And how were you made right? By calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. And through his spirit, the Holy Ghost, he did it. I want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes on it's the final breakup. You know that there are people, and maybe you were this person. <laughs> they try on relationships like they try on pairs of pants. Right? You know, I, for me, I did my best. I never dated anyone until I was 22 years old. And it was really, it was really hard. But I did it because I thought I was going to have this amazing ideal. And the first person I was going to date, I was going to marry. I was that person. And I'm saving myself. I never even held a girl's hand until I was 22. I, I, I never kissed anybody. Never, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. It's not for, not for claps. You just wait. You don't know the next part, my brother. Thank you, though. Hey, I could stop it there. <laughs> well, 
just give you. But what ended up happening was I met a girl, the only girl I dated besides my wife. I thought she was going to be my wife. And there came a day where I really realized my dad flew down. She, I was in Australia at the time. She was an Australian. And uh, my dad flew down to Australia just to meet this girl because my dad's blessing means everything to me. And he came down and he met with her and she leaves the table and I go, so dad, right, right, you know, I need the approval. And dad looks at me and he goes, and when he does that, I go, oh, no, 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 no. And I didn't even let him say what he was going to say. I said, pop, no, you're wrong. I just said, you're wrong. Whatever you're about to say, you're wrong. And he said, he said, son, he was just like, he was just trying to get out the words. and I wouldn't even let him speak. He said, son, I think she's so kind. I'm just telling you what I feel. She's not the woman for you. And for the next five years, not five days, not five weeks, not five months, I was in torment and depression. I broke up with her a few months later. It definitely was not working out. She didn't want anything to do with the ministry. She, she was a first-generation Christian. She loved the Lord, but she had aspirations to do other things. She was an opera singer and all this other stuff. She didn't want to be in the ministry. And so I actually started getting upset about my calling. I remember saying, God, if ministry is this what it gets, the only person I love, the right woman for me, let me go. She broke up with me. And I remember going back and being like, and I've never felt depression. God, understand, I've never felt depression a day of my life. I'd never been sad. I mean, I've been sad, but I, I, I honestly, I promise I'm not lying. I never have known a day that I have felt depressed. Like, truly, like, I'm not going to come out of this. And these feelings of what's, and for the next five years, I cried. And I wept. And I, 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 I stopped going on the road for about six months. I stopped preaching. I went and started knocking doors to sell, to sell direct TV, phone service, and bundling everybody. I was that guy knocking on your door. Can I hook up your, can I upgrade your internet speed? I was that guy. But every time, listen, every time somebody came to the door, God would tell me what was wrong with them. So even if I wanted to run away from it, I couldn't run away from who God called me to be. Some of you need to stop running because even though you've tried to run from God, the gifts that are on your life keep showing up in your face. And I remember for those six months I'm doing it, and my dad finally came up one time. I'm, I'm in an apartment, and my dad came over. I hadn't showered in 10 days. I'm serious. Never has this ever happened. I'm talking it was serious. My dad comes up, and he says, son, I have to talk to you. And I don't care if you want to listen to what I'm going to say or not, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm, I'm about 25 years old. This is, I'm 39 now, so it's 13, 14 years ago. And I remember my dad comes up and he says, son, you have an idol in your life. And I start saying, preach it, dad, preach it. Go ahead, just preach it at me, preach it. That's what I'm saying. being honest tonight. Can we be honest tonight? I said, preach it, Pop. And he said, I don't care what you're saying right now. And God came in that room when he put his hand on my shoulder. He said, son, this woman is controlling your joy. She's controlling your peace. She's controlling your life. You're not doing your calling. And she doesn't even want to talk to you. And with everything you're doing, son, you are telling God that he's not enough for you. That's when I hit my knees. And through the powerful act of repentance, which is about to happen to some of you. Through the powerful act of repentance, I was delivered. Because I had put a person... Even though God loves her, I put her in such a place in my life that she controlled whether I was happy or whether I was sad. That's idolatry. Oh, you complete me. That's idolatry. 
No person completes you. Only Jesus can truly fulfill you. And I started thinking about the, how God, Jesus calls us his bride. Did you know that you're a bride? That means that when you got saved, you came up not just to an altar, but truly there was a ceremony that took place in heaven. It wasn't just us praying for you or you were in that car. When you closed your eyes and you confessed with your mouth and you believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord. There was a ceremony that took place in heaven where you married a new lover. You married someone and you had vows to him. Everyone else dies. Every other lover is gone. I give away all my old things. And Paul is coming and he's saying to this church, you are having church. You are saying the lingo of Christians. But you still haven't broken up with your old girlfriends. It's like coming and saying that I sit here, Ariel, come up. And I'm waiting. And Jesus, we're in a relationship now. Jesus comes. Give my hand. We know who he is. And Jesus is ready to spend time with me. He wants to do a life with me. This is how he is with every one of you. He comes to the table. The Bible says, knock and I will come. I'm knocking on the door. Will you open up? I want to come in and sup with you. I want to come in and have a meal with you. I want to take you step by step through your life. I want to give you the answers you've been crying out for. Jesus is ours and we are his. But we show up to the table. We begin to talk. Jesus thinks it's going to be, you know, just him and I. Julissa, come out. But all of a sudden, he doesn't know it. He, he, you know, he's thinking it's just going to be us and somebody else joins the table. I'm on, I'm on a date with Jesus right now. Or supposedly we are, we're here, but, but somebody else came through the table and Jesus goes, well, who's this? Well. You know, it's my old girlfriend, you know, I, I, you know, the girlfriend might be, you know, uh, drinking or, uh, you know, I just have this thing. But just so you know, she's only going to be here on Saturdays. But for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's just going to be you and me. Well, actually, um, Gary, come on. Actually, let me, let me correct that, Jesus. Let me correct that for just a moment. Um, so, so Saturday, she's only going to be here on Saturdays, but. This is my anger. This is, this is my, oh, I, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. But, but aren't you okay with this? I mean, don't you know, Jesus, I love you the most. I only, I only go to this old anger, this old, this old sin when they really cut me off on the road, you know. I mean, they, they got to be told what's what, you know. Or if somebody says something to me, I can't just be quiet. Like, how am I just going to let them gossip about my family? I mean, so he only visits, you know, every once in a while, usually Monday night. Friday at 5 when traffic's going on, you know, but, but just know that I don't love him as much as I love you. We have brought into the relationship with Jesus other girlfriends, other ex-lovers, and Paul is saying it's time to have a final breakup. It's time to say. Tonight is the night for some of you. Maybe you've come to this church for years. Jeremiah, go ahead. I want you to start praying, set me on fire again, that song. Maybe you've come to this church for years. And you've gotten so much change. Maybe you've gone through Holy Warriors. Maybe you're in a DG. We pray that you are. But I promise there comes a moment where God says, it's time. I don't want to share you anymore. I don't want to share our times together. I don't want every single time that you come into my presence that the first thing that you're having to do is repent for the first 10 minutes. I would love to just be with you without having this in our relationship. Every eye is closed in this place. The love of God is here. It's a very, very simple message. 
But right now, it is a moment of deliverance. And it comes through recognition, not of the anger of God, but of his love for you right now. It is the goodness of God, the Bible says, that leads us to repent. Tonight, we've been worshiping the Lord. He's already here. Altar team, if you'd come up, I just want you to do something very simple as you're closing your eyes. I just want you to ask yourself an honest question. Are there any other exes that are still in your life that you say, Lord, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to, God, I'm asking for supernatural help right now. At this altar, there is the help that you need. And I'm believing that as you make a walk of faith unashamed. You know why? Because if you don't admit you need help, you can't get the help. If you're not honest with God, he already knows. But sometimes we have to be willing to put our pride aside and say, Lord Jesus, I'm tired of this. Tonight's my final breakup. As you've been in this atmosphere of worship and praise tonight, and this month we are talking about being a disciple. Remember this. You don't want to be following Jesus with corpses on your back. You don't want to be bringing other people to the party. It's time for you. I'm not saying you're never going to have a trial again. I'm not saying you'll never feel like you're tempted again. I'm not saying that. But when you do make a decision, I'm telling you, the power can be broken. If that's you tonight, I'm going to ask for two things. Number one, do you know Jesus? Let's get that relationship started tonight. Do you know him? Have you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that he's your Lord because he wants to come into your life? If that's you, just really quick, would you just raise your hand and say, I want to receive Jesus tonight. I'm looking all around right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you just stand where you're at? I promise I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. Would you stand? If you lifted your hand, just stand up right now. Come on, give him a hand right now all over this building. Every single person, I see you in the back. We love you. Jesus is here with his love. Would you do me the honor of allowing me to pray for you? Do I have permission to pray for you? Would you just wave your hand at me? Yeah? Okay, I promise I won't ask you any questions. Could you come up to one of these people right now and let them pray for you? Give them a hand. Give them a hand right now. Come on. Take your last step. You've already stood up. Let's take your last step. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give them a hand. Like it's your own family. We're going to pray a prayer with you in just a moment. You're going to be connected with somebody who's going to tell you you're going to get water baptized. It's going to be so amazing. Right before we do that, I want to ask this next call. Are you saying, Gavin, you know what? Tonight is my night. I'm done with this. I'm not going to ask you anymore. I, you know who you are. Stand up right where you're at. I am done with this. If this word is spoken to you, come on. She's getting delivered right there. I want you to stay where you're at, ma'am. Stay right there. Stay right there. Lift your hands up. Right where you're at. Lift your hands up where you're at. If you're standing, lift your hands up. Lift your hands up right now. God is here. I see you. Thank you for your honesty all the way in the back. All the way in the back. Look at these people standing. Brother, you're going to get delivered tonight. Tonight's the final time. I'm believing the power of God. Yes, brother. Thank you for being honest. Would you all walk up here right now? Walk up here right now. Come on, give me one last hand. We're going to be praying for souls. And we're going to be asking him to give you deliverance tonight. Everybody's still seated. Everybody's still seated. This is your moment. Wow, look at all these people. Look at all these people coming. Tonight is their night. Tonight is delivered. Aren't we happy? Come on. Let's congratulate people who are honest. People who say they need help from a great God. Now listen, this is what we're going to do. If you're up here. Maybe you already know Jesus, but would you pray this prayer with all of us? If you came up specifically to be saved, make sure you say it out loud. Let's say this prayer all together, and then we're going to pray for this next step, and you're going to be set free. Let's pray. Release this prayer right now. Dear Lord Jesus, say it loud enough you can hear it. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I thank you that you died on a cross, and you shed your blood. So I could know you. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me, God. You know everything about me. 
take over my life. I need your help. Lord God, make me a disciple. Help me to become a true disciple. Now, as you're sitting there right now, begin to forgive yourself. That includes people who came up. I want you right now to begin to just open your heart right now. I need a leader with every single one of these people. We need a leader up here right now. If there's a woman that you see that's not there, guys, this is your opportunity. If you are a DG leader, you need to be up here. We need a leader with every person. What's about to happen? They need one-on-one -on -one contact right now. Thank you for moving. Everybody moving, wherever you're at. Don't assume that somebody's going to do it for you. Come on up right now. Just a moment. We're about to pray, but you need somebody with you right now for what's about to happen. Want to make sure everybody has somebody. We have a young man right down here. We have a young man right down here who needs somebody. We have a young lady right down here who needs somebody. We have to make sure we have somebody with every person. Yeah, we have a young man right here. Would somebody come right over here? We have somebody. Thank you so much right here. Thank you. Make sure everybody has someone. God is already beginning to move, but we need somebody with you. I'm going to say a basic prayer, and then they're going to go in and begin to pray for you. And I'm believing that deliverance is going to happen. Now, if you pray just to be saved, just allow them to bless you right now. But if you are coming up right now to say this is the end, let me tell you the truth. Whatever you might have been dabbling in, let repentance touch your heart right now. And as it does, God has to disconnect you disconnect you from what might have been happening in your life. If this is a breakup, you can't make it happen. You make the choice, God provides the power. Let me say it again. You make the choice, God provides the power. So right now in the name of Jesus, everybody lay in your hands. Lay your hands on their heads right now, whoever's in front of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you are disconnected. I sever the relationship right now. Whatever you might have been a dabbling in, whatever you might have been ashamed of, Lord, right now let your delivering power by the blood go. Pray, pray, come on, come on, prayer warriors, come on, altar team, come on, DG leader, begin to pray, begin to pray. Pray out of love, pray out of love, the love of Jesus. He wants these people for himself. He wants these people for himself. They've come up here, they've been honest. You're getting delivered, you're getting delivered, you're getting delivered. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. This is a moment. Every person out in the crowd, stretch your hands out. You should be praying for them. Pray for them right now. Would everybody stand to their feet out there right now as they continue to pray? Would you stand up with me? These people right now have dedicated themselves. They're going to keep on praying, but let's just give them all a hand right now for being bold. They're getting healed right now. They're getting delivered right now. They're getting set free right now. Come on, give them a hand. Say, thank you, God. Let's worship Jesus for what he's done tonight. Now, every person with your hands lifted, let me give you a blessing. Every person with your hands lifted. I'm praying that your houses are free of all contention. 
I'm praying that if strife and arguing is happening, that God will bring peace. I'm praying that your marriages are blessed. I'm praying for your house right now that there is no evil that could ever touch it or ever come. I'm thanking you that your bedroom is clean, that your kitchen is clean. I'm thanking you, God, for every relationship for your brother, your sister. I'm thanking you, God, that he has them in the palm of his hand. I'm thanking God for trust right now. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may it give you peace in Jesus' name. Give him one last hand right now. You all are dismissed. Don't forget to come on Sunday. Pastor Marco's going to be speaking again. Pastor Marco will be here speaking about DGs. We will see you really soon.